Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Just wanted to let you know we've got a brand new show partner. We're working with Creative Cow to bring you an even better podcast. So if you want to interact with us, be sure to head on over to creativecow.net and check out the Photoshop forums where you can post questions as well as pick up bonus files related to the podcast. Today, we're going to be exploring non-square pixels, which is a problem for a lot of folks. Let's jump right into Photoshop and take a look at how these work. So here inside of Photoshop, I've opened up a regular image. And I picked this photo because it has a circular image in it. And that's because I really want to take a look at how circles are handled. Now, a circle is one of the easiest ways to see a problem with a non-square pixel. Let's start off by making a new document sized for video, File, New. And within this, we'll go to the Film and Video Preset category, and you'll see we have several options. Let's start with a standard definition type workflow here with NTSC D1. Notice when I pick that preset that it indicates that it's using a pixel aspect ratio of 0.91. Now, in Photoshop CS4, they further refined the non-square pixel presets here. So it used to be 0.9. Now they're being just a little more accurate with 0.91. And what that really means is that the pixels are not square shaped. In this particular case, they're a little bit taller than they are wide. So when you divide the height by the width, you get that aspect ratio. Let's see this. I'll go ahead and click OK, and it's going to make a new document for me. Now, this is a lot less confusing if you get out of the world of inches right away. So let's just right click and change our rulers to pixels. And notice that it goes from 0 to 720 which is the width that we specified for the standard definition preset. I'm going to also go up and choose View, Show, Guides. And this will give us our safe title and action safe preview areas. Let's go ahead and grab that photo. I'll select it by choosing Select All. And then we'll copy it to our clipboard, Command or Control C. Jump on over to the new document and hit Paste. Now, the picture is a lot bigger than we need for this particular image. So let's go ahead and scale it down. Easiest way to do that is free transform. Command or Control T. And then you could press Command or Control 0 to zoom out. And you'll see the control handles. We'll just scale that in until you see the photo inside the frame there. Press the return key to apply it. And then we'll say view actual pixels. There we go. Now, I want you to notice that the circle is still a circle. We took what was a square pixel image shot with a digital camera and mixed it into a video preset document. Well, Photoshop automatically correctly interprets the non-square pixels. If we take our marquee tool here and we draw out a circle, you'll see that the circular photo is still a circle. Notice how that fits within the circle just fine. Now, there's a lot of things happening in the background. In reality, this circle is not a circle inside of Photoshop because it is using a non-square pixel. If we simply go to the View menu and we turn off Pixel Aspect Ratio Correction, you'll see that the circle stretches out. And that's OK. In the world of video, we don't use square pixels for most of our video workflows. What this means is that when designing graphics, the pixels are actually stretched. Then, when it goes back to the television screen, they get stretched back correctly. Let's see this with a different document in hand. I'll go ahead and say File New. And from the Film and Video category, we'll choose NTSC D1 widescreen. And you'll see that it's displaying at 720 by 486 with a pixel aspect ratio of 1.21. When I click OK and make a new document here, Notice that this document is still 720 pixels wide, but it is displaying at a larger size. In fact, 720 times 1.21 is approximately 860. And that's the size the graphic would be if working in square pixels. Let's see this. I'm going to make a new image here. And I'm just going to size it to 860 by 480 pixels. And we will fill that with a solid color. And let's just copy that to our clipboard and switch back to this new video preset and hit Paste. Notice we could drag that right into place, and it fills the screen. 
That's because it handled the non-square pixels. Now, the same sort of thing will happen with a photo. Let's just grab our photo, copy it, and paste it into our widescreen document. There it is. Free transform, Command or Control T, and then Command or Control Zero to zoom out. Scale this, holding the Shift key will do a nice job and constrain the proportions. There we go. And just get that into the frame. Let's view that at actual pixels, and notice it too is correctly interpreted as a circle. But if we go under the View menu and we turn off Pixel Aspect Ratio Correction, you'll see how it's distorted. So in both cases, we have images that are not displayed correctly inside of Photoshop until you turn on Pixel Aspect Ratio Correction. The good news is, is that Photoshop does all of this in the background for you. So you can mix different pixel aspect ratios together into a document, and Photoshop will correctly interpret the pixels. All you need to remember is this. If you are dealing with something that was scanned or came from a stock photo, it likely has square pixels. Same holds true for an image taken with a digital still camera. But when you design graphics for Photoshop for video, it is highly likely that you are working with non-square pixels. The great news is, is that Photoshop will automatically handle the mixing of the two types of pixels together seamlessly. Simply choose the new document preset, and when you pick the correct size for your particular video workflow, let's say, for example, we were doing high definition DVC Pro, you'll see that it plugged in the correct pixel aspect ratio for you. So the great news is, is if you let Photoshop do its job and you focus on designing, you don't have anything to worry about. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. We've got lots more for you, and I invite you to check in with us over at creativecow.net where you can interact and ask questions over in the Photoshop forums. Thanks again.